In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a custom gate for your deck. So if you have children like I do, or if you just want to enclose your deck, it's a nice little fun project that you can do. It doesn't take too much time. And so you'll have two sturdy hinges like this. You can have a nice latch here that's lockable. And we basically can open it all the way up. And it's like it's not there. It tucks nicely away. It stays there on its own. And then if you want to close it, you can basically close it like this. And it latches all on its own. And so if you're interested in that, stick around. So it's time to build a gate for this deck. Now one of the first things that you want to do is check to make sure your posts on either side are as plumb as they can be. A lot of times there's not too much that you can do. Uh, hopefully the railing was put in in a way and the posts were put in in a way that made them as plumb as possible um, so that it's a consistent measurement here. But we want to get our measurement here of this opening. And so it's no surprise since I built this opening to be 36 inches that it's pretty much 36 inches on the dot. And also since these posts are fairly plumb, that 36 inch opening goes all the way down. But you want to make sure to get a measurement towards the top and towards the bottom uh, just in case uh, the opening is a little bit bigger uh, at either the top or the bottom. We might want to account for that when we build our gate. We also want it to line up with our railing system in terms of the height and so we're measuring from the bottom of our current railing system up to the top and then we can get a nice reading for how high we want it. For me it's going to be about 36 and 3 eighths. So you can see our width of our gate is going to be 3 quarters of an inch shorter than the gap between the posts and so we had 36 inches between the posts that means we're going to have 35 and a quarter for um, the width of our gate. That'll leave a gap on either side. And also we have that 36 and 3 8 measurement for the height of our gate. And so the way that this will be designed, there's many ways to do this gate, um, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to flip two by fours up on their edge and miter them in all four corners and then put the balusters in the middle. And that is the design that I chose to do. We need two pieces of two by four cut at 36 and 3 eighths, and then we need two pieces of two by four cut at 35 and a quarter, measured from the long end of the miter. So we're going to take our miter saw and set it at a 45 degree angle, and then we're going to get cutting here. The wood that we will be using is treated wood, so make sure that it's rated for outdoors. Uh, and then we'll also be sealing it afterwards. All of our fasteners as well uh, are going to be these GRK screws, which are rated for treated wood. Okay, so with one hand you hold it in and down and support it, keeping your fingers away from the saw. Turn the saw on and then we'll cut our first miter. <laughs> When we measure this, we're measuring from the tip of this miter cut to the tip of the next miter cut. So there's my mark at 35 and a quarter. You can see how that is going to be to the tip of the next miter. Here's our first piece at 35 and a quarter. This one, let's say, can be the bottom. Notice how some of the cut turns out a little bit rough. We can just take some sandpaper or a sander and, and get that nice and smooth. For the top piece now, it's an exact copy basically, so you can either measure it again or you can line it up uh, on one side and then basically just cut down and use the first one as a template for the second one. Now we're doing the left and right sides and these will be cut at that 36 and 3 eighths measurement. Now we have it mocked up with our two side pieces and then our top and our bottom piece. The way that we are going to fasten these together is basically take a little countersink bit, make a little bit of a pocket hole for this screw to go in. We'll put it in here, uh, which will have plenty of meat into the next board. And then I'm also doing one there as well. And on top of that, I really need to do some glue. So we're doing the Tight Bond 3 
exterior wood glue and I'm not doing that yet because I want to make sure that I kind of dry fit the gate first in case I need to make any minor adjustments. I would rather be able to unscrew it rather than deal with the glue. Uh, so I'm not going to glue it until I'm sure everything is great. And the screws that I'm using here are 3 and 1 8 inch uh, R4 uh, GRK screws and it is good for treated wood. Okay, so now our frame is roughed in here. You'll see that the miters are never going to be exactly perfect. And so what we're gonna do is just take the sander and round over and just make these nice and perfect here at the seams. Uh, so don't worry too much about that. Just get it as close as you possibly can. And remember, I did not glue it yet. So just in case it doesn't fit or I have to make any minor adjustments, I can just unscrew it and do some cutting and then screw it right back in. So I went and fit the gate and it looks really good. So I'm going to disconnect one joint at a time and glue it and then reconnect it. And so we'll have a nice strong glued and screwed uh, miter joint. Both screws are backed out and you can see I put glue on that side and glue on that side and we'll just screw it back together nice and tight, getting the miter joint as tight and accurate as we can. You'll see the glue ooze out of this joint, and so what we'll do is just take a finger, if you want, and just kind of wipe it clean. And then what we'll do is sand it, too, uh, and just make sure that this is perfectly flush. You can also sprinkle in some sawdust to make your own wood filler, and that's also what we're going to do to fill the holes here. You can get the wood dust from your saw, or if you want a little bit of finer dust, you can get it from the sander, and that actually works really well. So this is what one of the joints looks like after the glue and sawdust, um, but before sanding. So as I said before, we're going to fill these little holes. I basically just filled it with glue and then put some sawdust on there. And then I took a putty knife and wiped it as flat as I could. And then we'll come back over with the sander. All right. So we'll fill that hole basically with the glue. And then we'll come back over with the sawdust. Just put a bunch of sawdust on there, press it down, and then we'll take the putty knife and just pack it in there nice. It can be messy at first. And then pretty much right away you can go over it with the sander and the sander is going to create uh, fine dust that will fill everything and make, make it all nice and flat. So we'll, we'll show you that here. You can do the same filling trick on knots like this or imperfections like this as well. Just to warn you, this trick is definitely going to kind of ruin your sanding pads a little bit quicker than normal. But they're pretty cheap, and I think it's worth it uh, for the saving of time. And so just to let you know, make sure you got a bunch of uh, sanding pads. So once the frame is built and sanded and all the holes are filled, now we're going to install the balusters. And so for that, we just need to measure uh, what the length needs to be for our balusters and cut them all to length. Once they are cut to length, what I did is pre-drilled them all at an angle. And then I'm coming in with these screws here. These are these trim screws, GRK, three and an eighth inch, and they have a much smaller head. And what I'm going to do is just come in at an angle like this, and it'll pop out right there. And I'm kind of going on either side here, and I'm doing it so that it will not show. So like the screw holes will be on the inside, they won't be on the faces. And so that will be the next step here. 
As for the spacing of the balusters, I took an old tape measure, marked it on the back every four inches on center, and then that will basically ensure that the spacing in between each baluster is less than four inches, which is what you want. Here it lined up pretty well so that I will have one, two, three, four, five, six balusters. If yours is a little bit um, not exact, you can just slide your tape measure until it's symmetrical and wherever you see a line is where a baluster will go, four inches on center. So I made a little pencil mark for the center of each baluster and I'll just center it and put a little bit of glue on it and then screw that one end in. And so we'll do that for all six real quick. So once I put glue on both ends, I basically screw it in at the bottom on the mark and then come up and screw it on the top at that mark and I make sure that it's rotated so that it is uh, where I want it to be before the glue dries. Once that glue dries, it will definitely not be able to rotate anymore. The other thing is because it's such a tight fit on these, uh, on these screws, you're probably going to need a right angle attachment for your drill and then you can really get up in there and do that angled screw um, the way that you need to. Now all the balusters are installed. Really the last step is to just do any last sanding that you want to do. Also, uh, maybe a couple of the balusters have a little gap like that. And so you can just take a little bit of that uh, glue and, and wood dust and, and fill all those little cracks. And then you're pretty much ready to go and install the gate hardware. So you can see how I already filled the cracks here and here. Uh, I'm just going to quickly do these ones as well. We're just going to put just a little bit of glue in here, 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 and here. And then we'll reach into our bag of fine dust, put that over it on each location, and then just wipe it with our finger. And it does not take long, and you'll see that it's basically just forming a nice little wood putty for us. And look at how nice that's coming out. And it just fills that little gap, makes it look a little bit nicer, and seals it all up. Now we'll hold the gate in place so that the gap is pretty much even on either side, approximately a quarter of an inch. And then down here we have our 2x4 as a spacer, similar to the bottom section of our railing. So now we install this hardware. Just be sure to pre-drill. I didn't actually pre-drill here, and you can see how it split a little bit. And so I took it back out, pre-drilled it, put it back in. Uh, I'm just gonna fill that with just a little bit of that wood filler. But down here, I did pre-drill, and you'll see how it did not split, and it's looking really good. And so for that, I basically used a drill with a 1 inch drill bit to pre-drill, and then I used this drill um, with a socket adapter and I have the clutch set on this drill to 10 and that actually torqued it down quite nicely without over tightening it. When I installed the two hinges on this side I actually made sure to lift this corner up just a little bit because over time the weight of the gate it'll eventually start sagging a little bit and so I'd rather have this end a little bit higher uh, to account for that over time. Not too much, but just a little tip for you. So the gate is done now. The last step was just installing this little latch. And so you had four screws and then two screws. It's really not that big of a deal. And this lifts up like this. And you can see how it opens nicely. And it can go pretty much all the way back here if you want. And then as you close it, it will latch nicely for you. Notice how I also filled that little split from earlier, so that should be good to go. And really one of the last steps is when I seal the deck uh, with the wood sealer, I'm also going to be coming over and sealing this. If you're wondering why this is just a little bit of a different color, it's because it's newer and it hasn't weathered yet. Uh, as the wood weathers, it changes colors a little bit, and so this will eventually all be blended in very nicely so i just did the two new railing sections today and this gate 
So I hope that this gate video helped you with your project, and if it did, smash that like button, comment, share, and subscribe for more videos related to construction. We'll see you on the next one.